In forestry, there's an important unit of measurement called basal area. And we're going to talk about what it is, what it's used for, and how to measure it. I'm going to apologize if this is a little dry for some of you, because this video is intended mostly for my clients, in particular those who are in the 40A tax plan program or who are otherwise intensively managing their woods. Suppose this sheet of paper were one acre of ground. And suppose this little cookie was a cross-section of one tree on our acre. And that would have a cross-sectional area of one square foot. So the basal area is a measurement of all the cross-sectional areas of all the trees that stand on that acre of ground. So in this particular woods, we have a basal area of 15 square feet per acre of ground. So how do we measure that? One way would be to take a fraction of an acre and sample how many trees fall within that fraction of an acre and average it over several points and add them together to give us an estimation of our basal area. So doing it that way could take a lot of time. So what if instead we were to stand at a certain point within our woods and we were to sweep in a 360 de degree circle we were to count any tree that was larger than, an, than a specific angle you use an angle gauge to measure basal area we'll have to go out in the woods and I'll show you how it's done you see how on the gauge there's several openings I usually use the 10 opening, that's a basal area factor of 10. It pertains to this opening. I'll show you what that means later on. So I'm standing on my first sample point. I'm going to drive my heel down into that point and I'm going to make a full circle rotating on my heel as I count the trees. The way you use this particular angle gauge is there's a little rubber nubby on one end of the chain. You put it in your teeth and stretch it out its full length so you can peer through the gauge. Your sample points, you want to make them well within the property lines and you also want to make them well within any clearings, like a field edge or a pond or something. I'm violating that rule right here just because I'm doing it in my backyard. I'm going to have a couple acres to play with. We're going to make a full circle and you want to begin with a starting tree and you want to pick out a tree that's unique in some way uh, either the biggest tree you can find or the only tree of that species you can find right here that cherry is closest to me so I think I'll call that cherry my starting tree so I'm going to pivot on my heel going in a full circle counting all the trees that's wider than this opening here we go one that one's a little bit small so we won't count it. Two, three, four, five. Those are under, those are under. That one's under. That one's barely under. Now see how that's a pair of them? You have to treat each, each trunk as a separate tree. Neither of them make it. Same thing here. Pair of trunks, neither of them is big enough. You have to check even leaners like that. That one's under. That pair is under. Is tree number six. That one's just under. Tree number seven. Tree number eight. Tree number nine. That one's barely under. That one's barely under. That one barely makes it. That's tree number 10. Now this skinny sapling would be easy to overlook, but you want to measure those too. 
that's barely under that one's just under that one I'll call just in that's tree number 11 and that's tree number 12 and here's our starter tree that cherry we began on so that's 12 trees we multiply by a basal area factor of 10 so you have a 120 square feet of basal area right where I'm standing now one measurement in one spot isn't going to tell you the whole story you want to take several of these measurements throughout your woods and average them together to uh, get the average base layer for your woods. So you'll want to choose an arbitrary distance and then pace it from point to point. Get several of these points throughout your stand and average them together to get the average base layer for your woods. So you choose a compass point, pace off a distance in that direction, and then drive your heel in the ground and take another sample and so on. Now angle gauges are specialized equipment. You can go to the Ben Meadows catalog or forestry suppliers and order one, but they're kind of pricey. So there's a quick and dirty method that you can use to check basal area and you already have what you need to make it. It's a coin. Now the opening for a 10 basal area is big enough to fit a penny in and our chain is 25 inches long. So if your natural reach holds a penny 25 inches from your eye, you can use that as your angle gauge. You compare it to any tree at arm's length and any tree wider than your penny you count in. My arms are pretty long so I use a nickel because it's going to be a little farther than 25 inches away from my eye. So in our illustration here, our eye would be the pin, the angle gauge or the coin would be right here and this would be a 25 inch distance. So how do we use this? This graph shows us how you use your basal area versus the number of trees per acre to arrive at how well stocked your woods is. Now if this table scares you, let me just give you a quick guide for New York State. If you're standing in anything that resembles a woods, it's going to have at least 50 square feet per acre of basal area. Between 90 and 120 square feet of basal area per acre, you're well stocked. You have enough trees to seed the understory and you have enough room for the trees to grow. Anything over 120 square feet per acre is overstocked. The highest I've ever measured myself is about 240 square feet per acre. That's a hugely overstocked woods. There's no tr no room left for trees to grow and complete shadow in the understory that no seedlings could take root in. So suppose you've measured your basal area and you discover that it's overstocked or understocked. What do you do now? Well that's a topic for a whole new video. Of course you could call your local forester and he'd be happy to talk to you about it. Thanks for watching.